Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbadger.com, out here with my course loadout from the Urban Precision Rifle down at Thunder Ranch. We'll go ahead and start kind of clothing, layers, stuff like that. I pretty much every day I was wearing some t-shirt to include this one right here. And for pants, wore these same pants for the entire three days. And it was these right here, which are the Cordell Combat Pants, I want to say, by Tactical Distributors. They're kind of a soft shell material. They have stretch to them and a lot of pockets. Pocket layout, kind of getting familiar with still, but um, definitely worked for me. Usually ended up keeping my RMT tourniquet over here, similar to where I carry it usually on like PDW pants and stuff like that. And then of course had blades, stuff like that, usually carry. And then they have these handy pockets, which kind of designed, sized for magazines. I would occasionally just carry a mag there, even though I had other methods of carrying ammo, but I would sometimes carry the mag there or even open up this front cargo pocket, usually stuff some empty mags there if I needed. And then, well, they had these vents and it did get a little bit warm. I don't think I ever actually used those for just kind of mechanical venting on the pants, but overall pretty comfortable. And they are set up so you can put knee pads in them. I didn't have any knee pads to put in them. Not sure if I would have or not, but definitely spent a lot of time kneeling on gravel there at that range at Thunder Ranch. Even honestly, just with kind of the doubled up material and a little bit heavier material with the soft shell, they did really good. Never ran into issues as far as like, oh, I don't want to kneel on these rocks. Like whatever, you're kneeling on rocks anyway. And yeah, was pleased with them. You never know what you're gonna get weather-wise down at Thunder Ranch. So I brought this also, and it actually ended up being cold sometimes in the morning. I would wear this right here, which is the Sitka Kelvin Down Light Jacket, and did good, kept the chill off. And then same with, eventually of course it rained too, cause all the weather down there. But that stuff did a good job for me. And then shoes, ended up wearing these right here, reviewed them before, these are the Limbs Primal Zins. They're just a nice minimalist shoe, a little bit heavier is the wrong term, but a little heavier than like their regular Primal 2s. And yeah, even hiking up on top of a mountain to do some kind of high angle shooting, still did a good job for me. And yeah, weren't heavy or burdensome at all. As far as kind of personal protective equipment, if I can find the rest of it. Ended up using these right here by Auto Engineering. They are over your ear pro. Turn them on, turn them off, turn up the volume, down the volume, all that stuff. These are actually made so you can run comms. We're not running comms, but they're pretty comfortable for me. And then for, I think most all the shooting, most of it anyway. I was using these right here, which are by Revision Eyewear. Some amazing stuff with respect to lenses and as far as one, ballistically, but then also some of the tinting they're able to do that like makes things stand out. And especially we're shooting this little red target on different stages of fire. And yeah, really pops with, I forget which lenses these are. These are the Kano, as far as the different tints they have, but they did a good job for me. And of course, I wear a prescription. So these prescription inserts, yeah, made it so I could see my targets and get those hits. Or if I missed, it had nothing to do with this. We did during that course actually go over to Brown Range, which is the kind of long KD range, goes out to I think 700 yards. And for that, ended up using some shooting bags. Two different ones, this one right here by Coltac. And then the other one I used is this, which is the Kilo, clever name, by Sawtooth Rifles. Ended up using them both. This one probably more, just because I was trying to get the gun higher. And yeah, pretty handy being able to basically build a shooting position anywhere using bags. They both worked out pretty well needed to carry ammo. So day one, we didn't do, day one was kind of half a day of shooting. So 
I wasn't going to throw everything on, so I ended up throwing it a little bit on. Ended up using this right here, which is the JSTA, just a pouch by Spirit of Systems. And inside here, the 1-1, maybe it's called 1-1. Basically, it's an insert by Lunar Concepts, also sold over a Wiseman company. And it has space for one pistol mag and one rifle mag. And we weren't shooting any pistol, but this was easy to just have on my belt. And then rifle mag would go ahead and go in here. It's this Tigris, Tigris, I always forget. Basically this insert they make though. So if you don't wanna use the like elastic inserts by Spirit of Systems, you can use this rigid one. And it makes it really easy to both draw out your magazine as well as reinsert it. And so I would go up to the firing line, generally just doing a loadout of like three rifle mags. So I'd open this up and put two extra magazines in here, one there. And then as I worked through them, I would just swap them out and did a really good job for me. Then kind of the rest of the days, the other two days of shooting, we were definitely shooting more. Ended up using this, which is, this is a chest rig right here by Adi, Ate, Ot Gear, whatever. And apparently it's all tangled right now. I could probably figure it out, given enough time. There we go. So chest rig right here, kind of a pretty nice, comfortable kind of H harness. And then up front, this pocket, you can open it up, put stuff in here if you want. Kind of this front pouch, like the older Spiritus Mark III, Mark IV, something like that. And same thing with this. Rather than using the elastic insert, I ended up using one of these three mag inserts by Lunar Concepts, Wiseman Company, and it's Tigris, Tigris, whatever. So it makes it really easy to go ahead and pull mags out put it back in, whether you're reloading or in the middle on the firing line, just bumping mags forward. Really handy and worked out pretty well. I will say, I don't know if it's this material or this in conjunction with running the sling, definitely like sitting out there in the sun, ended up kind of wearing a nice little rash on my neck. Again, I'm not sure if it was this or the sling, what would be a solution? probably just like wrap this in velour then it'd be a non-issue but whatever and since someone will probably ask this patch yes it glows in the dark and it's from my friends over at black triangle group which is pretty cool things i fortunately did not use my fix-it sticks which i pretty much bring everywhere because they're handy and then things i definitely did use is some of this lucas gun oil extreme duty definitely needed it shooting suppressed the entire time i don't know if i lube my gun before i mean it was probably lube before i started but yeah definitely had to re-lube it and there was at one point when i'll show you the gun later it's so dirty at one point we're shooting from behind the barricade and i'm like ah it didn't sound right didn't feel right i look sure enough didn't go into battery just because it was so dirty forward assist shot through and then next chance I had went ahead and lubed it up something I did actually really like and appreciate using is this right here I don't even know what it's called I don't know some sort of bucket dump bucket it's actually by Dillon Rifle Company and it's made for shooting out a helicopter so you can obviously tether it with all this stuff down here and you have all these elastic places for magazines to include back here this kind of big big pouch and then up top it's kind of open slot so you can shoot and when you're done throw your mags in there and then your helo's not all cluttered up with empty magazines so what i would do is i had what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i don't know i'd like 11 12 13 mags I basically jam them all up, have them all in here, and as I would shoot through, like trips to the rain or trips to the firing line, go back, load ammo, I already had everything loaded. So I just pull out mags, shove them in my chest rig or in that just a pouch, take all my empties, 
throw them in there, use them, throw them in there, and then come the end of the day, just reload all the mags. A couple of things that were nice. One, just handy, but two, you don't want people waiting for you. Like everyone paid to be there, whether it's tuition, ammo, like time, travel, lodging, there's a lot of expenses associated with it. So the last thing you want to do is have a bunch of people waiting for you to sit there and load magazines. So being able to show up and have like 13 mags loaded and have them all in a convenient place where I could grab them, toss the empties in, know, hey, these are loaded, these are empty. Yeah, I was actually really pleased. This thing did a good job. Something else I ended up wearing not something you necessarily usually wear in a course like that was this right here, which is by Safe Life Defense. It is their 3A soft armor. And yeah, it was actually pretty comfortable. Why was I wearing it during that course? Did I think someone was gonna shoot me? No, but if I did, this might've stopped it. We were shooting frangible. And really, I'm in the business of reviewing things. I need to get time with stuff, so I ended up two full days of wearing this to include hiking up a mountain to go shoot from a high spot and yeah overall it's did a good job i will say the end of day two one of these zippers and i don't know if it just kind of came unstowed or what but one of these zippers started creating kind of a hot spot and yeah i eventually kind of tucked it back in and that kind of alleviated that but overall pretty lightweight and pretty comfortable fortunately no one shot me eventually it probably won't be out when this is out but i'll have my review of this armor as well which brings us to the rifle i was shooting for that urban precision rifle so similar to urban rifle that thunder ranch does this one is urban precision so basically higher accuracy standard from a number of different distances. And I ended up taking this down there and shooting it. It is my new, newish, I guess, gun in that new barrel, we'll say. I ended up sending out some parts to Criterion Barrels and they built me this upper, which is pretty sweet. It uses their 11 and a half inch core series as far as kind of the contour. And on there, I have the Sierra 5 by Dead Air Silencers, and this Geisley, their super modular rail, Mark 1 Mod 1, old school, I actually really like this rail. And then we weren't really doing low light stuff or anything like that, but had this on here by Phantom Hill, has a Kiji head on one side, Surefire head on the other, IR, like laser in the middle, buttons for all of those. And then over here, this grip, this is the kind of pre-production prototype they're pretty close with stoner rifle grip from die free company and optics the prospectus astro 8 by accufire and it is a first focal plane going from one crank this guy all the way up to eight and it has a usable reticle definitely did a number of or a bunch of shooting like just using the reticle holds within it and then of course there's turrets where you lift them up and you can go ahead and adjust them as needed and it's also illuminated is it daylight bright well you can turn it on in the day but it is not like a fireball it's not at all like a red dot i played with it some for some of the shooting and honestly fortunately the reticle design they did a pretty good job with as far as big stabia lines coming in from the sides and the bottom and then kind of a reticle that's in the middle to where with no illumination in most situations I actually did fine so no issues definitely not daylight bright in my experience and what else sierra attack sling did a pretty good job didn't do too much sling work but um yeah I was pretty, oh yeah, and guys, the super dynamic enhanced trigger in there. And yeah, this gun did good. We were shooting frangible, so the accuracy you're gonna get out of frangible is the accuracy you're gonna get out of frangible, which is nothing super amazing. And then the other thing we ran into is 
the wheels kind of fall off past like 300 so we really didn't shoot much past 300 but zero to 300 this definitely did a good job the yeah being able to go to one yeah one to eight was nice throwing this thing up at 1x and getting hits especially up close or moving further back we need to refine that sight picture easy to just crank it to eight and get those hits all that said how did kind of all this gear do for me honestly it did really good i have no issues with any of it some things i finally got to try like this and performed really well and same with this rifle we actually practiced some malfunctions outside of that i had zero malfunctions aside from kind of self-induced when i let this thing get so dirty but fortunately i caught it and yeah lubed it and continued shooting optic did really good let me get in there to again refine that shooting or find that sight picture rather or like shooting the left eye on some of those drills and yeah i was pretty pleased overall and it was just pretty cool class a lot of varied shooting loopholes all kinds of stuff really good time down there and last but not least if you appreciate my content and want to support it really appreciate it. it helps me go out there and create more content for you one of the ways is supporting me directly through patreon where as a patreon or patron supporter get early access to videos as well as some exclusive stuff and access to discord so if you have questions for me happy to answer them over there and there will be links to pretty much all this gear down below go check it out but yeah, as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.